99 red balloons who does not like this song this is a great song i totally remember when this song came out lots of fun and you are going to learn it it's a really fun bass line it's got some slow stuff some fast stuff kind of speeds up you're going to love this one check it out i am finbar of finbar bass all right so what are those lessons all about down there when you click in the youtube text box right down there you should definitely do that if you haven't already there are some really fun lessons uh, for beginners on there there's one for intermediate for more advanced players uh, for instance, there's a lesson on the floating thumb technique, right? Which is a cool right hand, or actually a uh, plucking hand technique, I should say. If you're lefty, it'll be your left hand. Right hand, righty, you'll probably be your right hand. But it's a way to mute the strings out, to keep your hand in a natural position. It's the way that I play bass. I love it a lot. It's not the only way, of course. But these tips and tricks can kind of catapult you sort of like into the next level, make your playing sound more professional, and make those notes really ring out. Um, it's helped a lot of people out, and that's just one of the lessons, you know, that's just an example. But it's basically, again, about, you know, having fun, getting better on the bass, and playing some music. All right, so right in the beginning here, um, this here, really the bass doesn't do that. That's pretty much keyboard, but, but it's fun, and it's kind of like a little signature riff that you could do there. So you're going to be on the second fret of the D string, and you're going to hit it twice, fourth fret of the A. time and that deep note is of course the E this is in standard tuning by the way so the open E note and then what you're gonna do is that same part that I just showed you but then you're gonna do this sweet right so what is that you're you're gonna hit the you can do this a couple ways actually but you're gonna hit the fourth fret of the D string right and you're gonna hit that with uh, the D string on the uh, fourth fret, and you're gonna hammer on, right, to the sixth fret, right here, and then pull off. So really, you're you're kind of hitting it, and then you're hammering on with that finger, and then pulling off. So you got just like that up to here. And then you're going to do a quick, and by the way, these are very staccato notes right here. You're not playing, you're playing, right? Very staccato. And then you're going to go, just like we did before. And then <clears throat> the ending of this phrase is going to be, or if you want to hammer on to it, and that is you're hitting the second fret four times and then going up to the fourth fret and that's on the A string right so if I did that all very slow it might not sound, sound like it makes that much sense slow but if you do it faster Just like that and what's really cool if you want you can actually instead of just going to that hammer on situation there you can slide up from the second fret right so you're sliding from the second fret to the fourth fret on the d do the hammer on just like you did before and then bring it back down so we got Just like that. So the next part, uh, this is played quite a quite a lot in this song. You're going to be on the open E, right? Second fret of the E string. Do a measure on the A string. A open, that is. And then the second fret of the um, there's one finger so you can see it. Second fret of the A string, right there. So you got. And he does that quite a bit in the song. Uh, also, when you hear it speed up, or you could play it like this, you know, whatever, whatever, however you feel like playing this. You could play it like that, or you could play it faster. So to 
get kind of a sense of movement in the song, um, you can go from going slower, you know, to switching to eighth notes, eighth notes per measure. Just like that. Um, and you're also, uh, what you're gonna do is when you're gonna actually hear this in the song, What is that? All that is is instead of hitting the open E and the second fret of the E string at first, you're hitting their octaves. So that would be the second fret of the D string, and then the fourth fret. You just insert that where you would normally go. Right? Instead you're going. So if I played, you know, the whole thing like that, it would be. like that. In the beginning also you're going to hear, um, if you listen closely, you'll hear the first part that I played for you, this, uh, the bass like I said isn't really playing on there, really that's just keyboard, so over that you're going to hear, you can just hit it normally if you want, right? But you're going to take your thumb down over here so you're still kind of on top of the fretboard, just like that. I mean, I could talk about different ways to slap for like, you know, a whole, whole entire lesson. But anyway, you're going um, to hit the E string with, with kind of this part of your thumb right here, percussively, just like that, down onto the fretboard down here. And then you're going to do a... You're gonna, you, you, you could definitely hear that in the song. What he's doing there is he's just um, pulling on the string. He's got his finger on the... Uh, and I'm saying he, but it could be a she. I don't know if it's a he or a she, actually. Should have researched that, Finbar. Anyway, um, you're going to be on the ninth fret of the uh, G string right here. And you're going to do... And you're going to slap it tw or pop it twice, right? So what you're doing there is you're actually, instead of, instead of strumming it or, or uh, plucking it, you're actually going to grab the string and pull it away from the fretboard and then let it go and it's when you let it go it's gonna whack it's gonna pop right back against the front uh, fretboard right so you got just like that you're gonna hit it once and on the second time you hit it you're gonna do a slide you're gonna hit it, slide down with your finger so you got just like that then right at the end of the song, when everything's reaching a crescendo, you're going to hear something like... And all he's doing there is he's doing little hammer-ons between the 7th and the ninth fret of the G string. Trying to build some excitement there. So I'm, I'm really only plucking this one time before I hammer on with my finger to the ninth fret. I come down on that percuss percussively. Right, and you can listen to the song if you want to do it completely accurately, but, but that's the idea, you know. So right after your hammer-ons, you're going to do something like, uh, right, a little run there. What I'm doing there is I'm going from the ninth fret to the sixth of the G, right? And then you're going to go from the ninth, seven to the sixth of the D string. Then just the ninth fret to the seventh fret of the uh, A string. This seventh fret of the A string right here that you're hitting, that's the same note, just one octave higher as when you hit the E open. So you can actually, you can play them together if you want to get a fuller sound. You know, whatever is actually needed if you want, you know, in your band situation. <clears throat> uh, if you're playing with other people. Then where it's going to go is you're going to hit these octaves. And what you're doing there is you're hitting the E string twice open, right? And then you can either hit this seventh fret, like I said, seventh fret of the A string, that's an E. Again, this is building tension, you know. Or same thing, you can hit this ninth fret of the uh, G string, because that's an E too. So these are all E notes. alternate between the two. All right, you got it, yo. 99 red balloons from Nina. Mm.
You are gonna love that. Super, super fun. And I told you, not that hard either. Oh, and don't forget, click at the bottom to get those lessons if you haven't already. You can always subscribe to my channel if you feel like it. And other than that, have fun with that, yo.